With next-gen looming large, we're still learning how widely technologies like ray tracing will appear in PlayStation 5 and Series X games. Whether it's ray traced reflections, as seen in Gran Turismo 7's reveal, shadows, or global illumination, it comes in many forms, and the implementation can vary in quality. A recent hands-on with Watch Dogs Legion on PC then, gives an interesting case for how ray tracing can be made to work in big open world games. As the third instalment, this time handled by Ubisoft Toronto, Legion caught my eye for showing off ray traced reflections on an ultra quality preset, all running on an RTX 2080 Ti. The preview briefing mentions that ray tracing is set to appear on the next generation consoles as well, though the quality setting is still uncertain there. Still, even on high end GPUs like this 2080 Ti, there are some smart choices to get it working at Ultra, which may become a trend for its use throughout this generation. So what's the score? Let it be said, this PC build is extremely generous in scope. It starts with two missions, but offers free reign to fully explore a futuristic take on London if you prefer. I'll be honest, sightseeing turned out to be the far bigger appeal. The fun really is in seeing Ubisoft's creative twist on something so familiar, on a city whose every turn, from Waterloo Station to the Houses of Parliament, are so hardwired. Except this is an alternate reality where all is run by a private security force named Albion, and while the changes are plausible in places, other spots take it down a more dystopian path. It's eerie, for example, to see areas like Camden, Lambeth, and City of Westminster all included, but filled out with electric cars, a sky of surveillance drones, and neon billboards. And yet, much like the futuristic takes on Chicago and San Francisco in the first two Watch Dogs, it still comes across as a believable, livable place. It turns out London is an amazing playground for a hacker. Rather than playing as one character, you're given a starting pool of four members of hacker group DeadSec, a professional hitman, a hacker, construction worker and policeman, with options to recruit more across London through side missions. The hook is, every edition gives you more options. Each has unique special skills and weapons, plus tertiary traits based on their day job. The basics of Watch Dogs gameplay remains the same at its core. Most missions involve hacking your way to a target. The big difference? Based on the character you've chosen, you have different options to get there. You can treat an enemy HQ like a puzzle, hopping between security cameras to get to your goal, or you can go in all guns a blazing. The choice is yours. As a showcase for next-gen visuals, Legion also sets a high bar for packing in so many small details. It's often a beautifully lit game to start. Light streaks through the House of Commons, projecting the colours of a stained glass window onto the character, while there's a satisfying bloom to the new market. London's often mixed weather of sunshine playing across rain-soaked streets also makes it a good pairing for ray traced reflections. That goes for puddles as well as the damp of its abandoned underground. Case in point, the game kicks off with an attempted bomb plot under the House of Commons, really just an excuse for a tutorial. But this area is also used right away as a strong showcase for RT technologies included in Legion. A quick note on the menu settings we're using here before we press on. I left it mostly at the default set by the Ubisoft staff at 30fps locked, trying to push it to 60fps on the RTX 2080 Ti with ray tracing enabled and settings maxed, proved a stretch too far, though I didn't have a chance to test the DLSS option, which will certainly help. At least a lock 30 is possible in this early state, and it's a likely target for next gen machines if visual quality is the priority. Otherwise, there's ultra textures, shadows and environments, while per object and full screen motion blur return. The other point here is we have resolution set to 1920 by 1080 more as a necessity for getting capture. Whether PS5 and Series X could push to 1440p or beyond with ray tracing is something we'll discover soon. We really still need to see where the goalposts are on that front and how these machines can balance resolution, frame rates and new tricks like ray tracing. But as an example of Legion's best visuals, there's a lot going on here. So to start, the use of ray trace reflections works brilliantly for the scene.
car bodies, metallic floors, shop windows, and puddles across London streets are all properly ray traced. The iconic black cabbies and red buses stand out, with their glossy sheens demonstrating a beautiful crisp reflection in the light of day. It's hugely satisfying to see the tops of each vehicle mirror rows of trees overhead as you drive as well. Certainly, reflections are a little dithered if you look too close. Likewise for windows or puddles, there's a sign ray traced elements render at a lower resolution than the rest of the picture. Taken as a whole though, the open world is far more alive for it. Every pedestrian walking past, every passing motorcyclist, gets an accurate mirror image. All of it works in tandem with the strong world design. Much of Legion's ray tracing benefits from the minimal level of popping across the world. That so much detail gets reflected back is an impressive feat. I'm also glad it's not limited to just interiors, and we do see it in big wide open spaces where it can be more of a challenge. That being said, ray tracing doesn't apply universally. By selecting the Ultra preset for ray trace reflections, you block off the regular reflections option, the older, less precise screen space form. However, the twist is SSR is still used on certain types of surfaces regardless. Large water bodies like the River Thames or canals look great, but right now appear to use SSR rather than ray tracing. This may change for the final build of Watch Dogs Legion. It's an interesting design choice though. In Venice, it's one of the more accurate forms of SSR I've seen, but still beholden to limits. Note how the act of reflection disappears towards the edge of the screen as we pan past the Thames. Likewise, we get minor artifacts around the player in the foreground, again a mark of SSR. Unlike ray tracing, it relies on using the camera's viewpoint to draw reflection, but the upshot, as ever, is it's less resource intensive. As a kind of hybrid approach to reflections, it works pretty well I think, and could be the approach we see in other open world games to avoid performance drops. Still, I'd be curious to see an, in theory, extreme preset on PC to show how GPUs like the 2080 Ti hold up with ray trace reflections across the board. They've taken our SIRS contact away, but they may still be nearby. The majority of Watch Dogs Legion benefits from that ray trace setting. A bulk of my hands-on was spent in the inner city areas, flanked by crisp reflective skyscrapers or walking over wet streets. If not that, then it was hacking my way through glossy enemy HQs with gadgets like the Spider Drone, or the home base with its proliferation of flashing PC tech. It's clearly a point of pride for Ubisoft Toronto, and put front and centre across the city. As an aside, most missions also unfold using a neat augmented reality effect too. I enjoyed this a lot, you get a kind of pixelated apparition of past events on cue. It's mostly used to solve puzzles in a specific moment, like reverse engineering a crime with CCTV footage, but it's an eye-catching effect. There's a great injection of imagination going on with Watch Dogs Legion, to render London in the not too distant future. As a project that bridges the gap between generations, I'm fascinated to see how much of the maxed out PC experience we're seeing here will make the grade on PS5 or Series X. The bottom line though, it's feasible we'll see ray tracing used in this manner on next gen consoles. It's an effective hybrid approach that keeps performance in check while still giving great results, especially for open world style games. Whether this mixture lets us hit higher resolutions or keep most other settings maxed out remains to be seen. But it is one approach of many I expect we will be seeing in the coming months as more next gen titles are revealed. But that's all I have time for today. If you did enjoy this quick hands-on, feel free to like or subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell to get notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.